I'd like to start by saying I work at Oracle, but I'm not a database person. If folks have database questions, we have a lot of other folks out there. I actually come from the cloud division. Today, I'm going to talk to you specifically about Kubernetes and some of the learnings that we've had as a part of the managed Kubernetes platform uh, at Oracle. Um, and cloud native actually means a lot of different things to a lot of different companies. So for us at Oracle, uh, it's basically a suite of services, starting with the registry, the Oracle Kubernetes, uh, the container engine for Kubernetes, functions, uh, and a lot of supporting services surrounding it, like notifications, monitoring, et cetera, and et cetera. But the foundational pieces of all of this is like three specific things, the registry, the container engine for Kubernetes, and uh, the functions platform, which is Oracle Cloud's uh, serverless offering. So one of the things that I kind of wanted to bring up is, you know, behind the scenes, what kind of happens when we build large platforms like the Kubernetes engine? Um, I used to be a developer on this team, and then uh, turned out that I like talking to people. So much in large enterprises, if you like talking to customers, you get put into an advocacy role. So that's just what happens in, in large enterprises. And also, um, we, we call it Oracle Kubernetes, Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes, but enterprise naming can be complicated sometimes. So I like to call it OKE instead. Um, so for us, uh, surprisingly, on Oracle Cloud, the Kubernetes engine, OKE, is one of the most popular platforms we have. It's uh, not as popular as our, our, as our database, or ATP, but uh, you know, it's one of the top three things that we use. And the reason for this popularity is threefold. Uh, first off, it's, you know, it's on Oracle Cloud, so a lot of customers like to use Kubernetes, the managed offering. Uh, it's also used internally by a lot of teams to kind of do a lot of their work, so they, you know, they don't have to manage the specific platform. And also, we're trying to leverage the Kubernetes engine uh, for folks to actually build products on top of Oracle Cloud. Um, and so that way, they're using the Kubernetes, the managed Kubernetes data plane to build their own products. So what is some of the issues that we've kind of seen when we've been building out this platform? Uh, first off, when we started the project a couple of years ago, uh, we started with like a full stack team, right? So developers, full stack, uh, we like to build uh, things all together. So uh, when we started, like anybody could kind of work on any piece of the code, and uh, that was the that was the idea that we had, uh, and we learned a lot when we were building the first the very first edition. But as we all know, Kubernetes that's really really vast. The landscape is pretty big, uh, and it was kind of hard to keep up with all the different pieces uh, up and running. Uh, so, you know, when you were working on Kubernetes from a Kubernetes perspective or from an Oracle perspective, everything changes over time, APIs, etc. So it's hard to keep up. And then also, individuals kind of started to learn uh, more expertise in certain areas. So for example, for me, like I was working in the authentication portion of Kubernetes and OCI. So I was like, oh, OK, I understand authentication authorization a lot more. And you, know, you keep kind of going in, in those specific areas, and you gain expertise. Um, so in the end, what we ended up doing was we actually re-architected our team a little bit, where we, we thought you know, le everybody learning any, everything was a little bit challenging. So let's break this down and you know, split our one single team into three smaller sub-teams where we had a control plane team, a data plane team, and a platform team doing uh, different tasks. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, metrics. And I put this picture up here because uh, regardless of what you ask this guy, he says aliens. Um, and so for me, in that same case, I was like, oh yeah, you know, metrics solves it, right? And so uh, we, we started off with, we were trying to collect, as developers, we're all about, we're all pro metrics, right? So we want to collect everything we have. So we had this like collect first and we'll analyze all this stuff later in dashboards. Um, and as soon as we did this, it worked great in dev. And then we pushed it out to production and you know, popular platform, everybody's kind of using it. Uh, and we were like, oh, we actually have issues like retaining this and storing this. Uh, and it was hard to understand what we were actually looking at in terms of our dashboards. So pretty soon, we were like, OK, you know what? Let's take a step back. Let's actually figure out what's important for us to collect. So you know, we brought in uh, management. We brought in product management, et cetera, to kind of talk about what's important to the service, what should we be collecting. Uh, and you know, we started to uh, figure out a lot of those portions uh, you know, side by side. So in the end, uh, we used metrics to our advantage rather than you know, just collecting everything. Uh, and our dashboards were, once again, useful. Uh, I want to switch to another topic, which is burnout. Uh, so we are all engineers, and we all really want to be working on platforms that are really popular. We have a lot of users, et cetera. That's the dream, right? Like, we want to build things. We want people to be using stuff. 
one of the drawbacks uh, behind that is if you have a small team and you're trying to manage something that's really popular, you know, you might get paged and you might get, uh, you know, a lot of on-call kind of things, et cetera. So teams start to struggle uh, when you can't balance time between fixing an issue like, a, you know, SEV1, SEV0, SEV2, whatever, in production versus actually fixing the issue from a long-term perspective. So you start putting a lot of band-aids, et cetera. And so constant firefighting uh, will, without actually fixing the underlying issue, like sometimes, you know, you'll, it'll lead to apathy. So you'll be like, man, I don't really want to be doing this. And then it ends up with disillusionment or burnout. So one thing for, for us specifically, the second point here was really important. We um, grew our team. So we had a team of 10 initially. And then we grew it out to 40, uh, 40 folks. And that was really helpful for us because we were able to not only fix things we had uh, running at the same, uh, you know, uh, fixing live production issues, but also going back and fixing some of the architectural choices that we had. Uh, also, prioritizing, prioritizing bug fixes with respect to features was really important because product is always like, hey, let's push out features, but we were like, well, we have to fix this bug, otherwise, you know, we're going to be on call like all the all the time. Uh, and also, being make sure making sure that we could rotate our feature team into on call was really important because it's important to be able to write great code, but if you're not actually supporting that code in production, you don't know how it works. So you don't know whether the choices you're making at development time are the right choices when you're actually running it. Uh, I want to switch to something real quick. Uh, so once we've deployed it, we have a lot of customers kind of using this. Uh, a lot of folks want to use Kubernetes for some specific use case. Um, I, I talked to a lot of folks, uh, a lot of customers, et cetera, they were like, how do you use Kubernetes to run Oracle database? And then, you know, that's a common question. But I'm sure it, uh, it resonates uh, to all of you in you know, your own way. And uh, one thing I want to kind of stress on is Kubernetes itself, it's a great generic platform. It can do a lot of things, and you can build a lot of platforms, et cetera, on it. But remember that it's not the only thing out there. There's a lot of other choices as well. You can, you know, if you're on cloud, you can use, regardless of what cloud you're on, if you're on Oracle Cloud, Amazon, whatever, there might be a native service that you could use. Or also, there might be different ways to build the same thing. So you might be able to use infrastructure as code, Terraform, et cetera. You might be able to use serverless uh, to you know, solve the same problem. So to kind of summarize all of this, uh, you know, we as engineers, we want to build like, the coolest stuff, uh, building platforms that you know, a lot of people use. Uh, so that's kind of the dream uh, to be in engineering. But also, you know, kind of make sure you're being empowered as your team, as your development team, SRE, SRE team, et cetera. Uh, watch for burnout. And then don't just randomly collect metrics because you're collecting metrics. Have a plan for how you're going to use, use it and make sure you're picking the, the right platform. So uh, if you like a lot of the stuff I've heard, uh, talked about, come chat with us in our booth. We're kind of doing a lot of uh, demos and stuff with respect to cloud native. Uh, we have a session later today at uh, 11.35, uh, and we'll be doing a raffle uh, in our booth for uh, headphones and a BB-8 droid. Uh, we're also doing lightning talks at the booth, so come by and uh, hope everybody has a great velocity. Thank you. <laughs>